The Golden State Warriors. I don't think they really suck. I think they're just maybe a month or two away from being the team we thought they were going to be this year. And I mean that sincerely. I do think they can still make the playoffs and everyone's going to be like, nah, they're not. But I know the Golden State Warriors fans listening to this video are going to be like, yes, we're going to make the playoffs. I don't know why I'm out of breath right now. Let me take a deep breath right there. <laughs> Either way, so before we start today's video, I want to hear the comments down below. What do you guys think the Golden State Warriors are going to do? Are they going to be a playoff team or they're just going to do the same thing of last year? And hit that like and subscribe button and let's start the video. So they lost. It's pretty much the game's still going on. It's the last few minutes, but they're being blown out. So I just wanted to start the video, get it out there. So I want to talk about what impressed me was James Wiseman. Mm, James Wiseman was really just going ham and it impressed me. It impressed me to the point that I really was like, damn, he was getting putbacks. He was slamming the ball down. And you could see, if you guys saw that he, him and Draymond Green were talking and you could see that Draymond Green and I was listening to the broadcast and the broadcast was like, he wants to learn. And I found out he speaks Mandarin and he also knows how to produce beats. Just a really intellectual guy, a guy who has really high IQ, which is something that surprised me to not know that about James Wiseman. So I think James Wiseman has a really good work ethic and I think he's probably gonna be one of, if not the best player out of this year's draft. And James Wiseman, as of right now, he only has four rebounds and 14 points, but he had two blocks in this game and he was just a defensive presence. Like he, one thing though, it was really pissing me off. I kept, I kept seeing it happen. He like walks a lot of on his screens. Like he, he walks a lot. Like his screens are a lot of moving picks. He sets a lot of moving picks and I don't know how he didn't get called for them more. There were a lot, and there's just a lot of like rookie mistakes out there, which I just think is because he hasn't played basketball in pretty much since last year after his third game. So, you know, that's that's why I think he looks like that. But if we talk about the rest of the team, Andrew Wiggins on offense is kind of a, a bum right now. He's not playing good offensive ball, but on defense, yo. I think this was one of the best defensive games. The past two games, he's been really good on defense. Last game, not as good as this game. But I, I even said last game, I tweeted saying that the commentators completely ignored the fact that there was a sequence of plays, a sequence of plays that was the greatest defensive sequence of Andrew Wiggins' career, in my opinion. Completely ignored. They didn't even acknowledge it. And today, thankfully, the commentators did acknowledge the fact that Andrew Wiggins was killing it, literally killing it on the defensive board. Not so much in the second half, but on the first half, he's just killing it defensively. I don't know why I said boards, but I'm on the defensive side. And what really sucks is he's getting the shots that you want. Some of the attacks to the rims aren't bad. It's just him trying to draw fouls. But you wish that those three pointers started knocking down. But I think in, as he gets more comfortable and gets better i think it's gonna be really interesting so eric pascal guy who who has a willingness to shoot threes but they weren't falling for him he plays good he's a guy who's all over the stat sheet but i really wish he was doing better rebounding wise it seems like he's just trying to be more of a pull-up guy but that's one thing kelly Oubre had a few turnovers and a couple wild sequence of plays just like he's trying to do too much at certain points but he's a really good guy who just does stuff that doesn't show up on the stat sheet gets you rebounds gets you steals get you assists will get you will draw fouls he has a willingness now to shoot three pointers which i love you know steph curry his stats didn't look amazing this game it's just he didn't really have much to work with and that just kind of sucks but Steph Curry's still trying to get back into a groove and get his feelings and like get everything back into how it used to be. So another thing that I was wild about is the fact that they have a 13 man rotation. Okay. Obviously Kevon, Kevon Looney, Marquise Chris, Bazemore, Poole, Lee, and Wanamaker are the guys who are playing the most. But then you got uh, Michael Mulder 
who they want to see if he can be a consistent three point like guy off the bench. And, you know, same thing with Toscano Anderson, who could be a defensive guy, kind of like a Kelly Oubre guy off the bench as well. Marquise, Chris, and Kevon Looney are kind of the part of the center by committee approach that they've been doing for a few years. So I really don't like Kevon Looney. I think he's just Steve Kerr loves him. He's just really loyal to him. And that was why he gets playing time. But I think he was on our team. He wouldn't be getting that much playing time. Just that's my 50 cents on that one. But I think the problem with this team is they really don't have anyone on the second unit that takes over. Like their leading scorer was Damian Lee. Am I, am I right? It's Damian Lee. I'm like 95% sure it's Damian Lee. Yeah. Da- yeah. Damian Lee. And it's, yeah, he hit two three pointers and he went to the free throw line, but like they, I think they need to do a trade for a guy who could be a legit six man. They need a six man of year type player. They need like a Lou Williams type player. If they could swing a trade for Lou Williams, that would be great. Lou Williams would be a great guy off the bench for them. They just need a guy who could be a 20 point scorer off the bench to run the second unit. I think that's the biggest hole. Like their bench is good. Just they don't have like if they had a 20 point score like a, a Lou Williams type player they would be phenomenal because then they would have a guy who could take over the scoring and be able to control the game when Steph Curry's off the floor and Andrew Wiggins is off the floor or even when just Steph Curry's off the floor and can just put points on bunches when no one else is there I think that's their problem without Clay Thompson there they don't have another guy who could just put up those points I think that's the biggest thing because if Clay Thompson was here, either Kelly Oubre or Andrew Wiggins, probably Andrew Wiggins would be the guy off the bench and be running the second unit, which Andrew Wiggins would be really good. I would love to see Andrew Wiggins as the sixth man, which I he probably was going to be or what they were thinking of doing with him this year was probably that was the plan. But now, obviously, with Clay gone, you can't do that. So kind of puts a damper into those plans. But that's just my, my take on that one. But yeah. So, I want to hear your opinions down below in the comment section. What did you guys think of this game? Are the Warriors screwed? I think in like a month, things will turn around when Draymond Green's back and everything's all right. Just give them a month. Have faith in my boys. I don't think it's going to be that bad. I feel like I feel like it, it, people are overreacting. It's not as bad as people think it is. People always think things are worse than they actually are. Well, that's the video, guys. I hope you guys do have a great Christmas or whenever you guys do watch this. Happy New Year's. <laughs> like and subscribe if you're at this part of the video, part of the end of the video gang. As always, guys, I hope you guys do have a great day because I know I will. Till next time, peace out.